Okay, everyone. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to day three for ACCA webinar June 2018 session. I'm your trainer Hamza Abdullah. Today we are going to solve ratios in day three. In day one, we have solved final accounts, day two consolidation, and I've already sent the answers on the spreadsheet Excel uh, on the WhatsApp group so you people can access those. And today we will be solving two questions, one by the name of Funjet Company and one by the name of Expand. So let's start with the question of Funjet Company. Some introductions, some instructions, and we are going to start now. Now in case of a ratio question, you're going to have a word processing area where you can write your answer. Now let's check the requirement. The question says that redraft expect company's statement of profit or loss for 20x4 to adjust for the disposal of the non-core division in note number one and the management and rent charges which would be imposed per note two and three if expect company was acquired by Funjet company and these um, uh, and this requirement relates to five marks of the question. In part B question says that calculate the 20x4 ratios for expect company companies equivalent to those shown in note number four based on the restated financial information calculated in part A. So first step is to redraft expect companies financial statements and then calculate 20x4 ratios um, based on the restated financial information calculated in part A. So if we are solving part A correctly, we will, uh, we will obviously be solving part B correctly. Note that you should assume that any increase or decrease in the profit as a result of your adjustment in part A will also increase or decrease cash. So any change in the profit uh, calculated in part A will also affect the cash. And this requirement is also five marks or 10 marks for the purpose of calculation of the profit and loss in the ratio. So approximately 50% marks of the ratios belongs to calculation. So if you are good at calculation, you can easily score 50% of the marks. Using the ratios calculated in part B, comment on expect company's 20x4 performance and position. So we will be using both profitability and liquidity ratios compared to industry average KPIs provided in note number four and these relates to the remaining 10 marks. So let's start uh, the question reading the question. If you people have any question you can post. I will be looking for the questions. Now the question says that Funjet company has identified a spec company as a possible acquisition. We are thinking to acquire the spec company. This is a possible acquisition within the same industry. Aspect company is currently owned by Gamilton Group, currently owned by Gamilton Group. And the following are extracts from the financial statements of Aspect company. So the extracts from the statement of profit or loss for the year ended 31st December 20x4 is revenue of 54,200, cost of sales of 21,500, gross profit of 32,700, operating expense of 11,700 and operating profit of 21,000. So now what was the requirement to redraft recalculate this the statement of profit or loss for 20x4. So we will be calculating recalculation of the redrafting the profit or loss for the year ended 31st December 20x4. So we are going to redraft this. We can mark this as a heading, heading one or heading two. Now I'm going to insert a table using this option. From here we can insert a table. For example, I will be writing revenue, cost of sales, gross profit over here. I will be showing some uh, showing some calculations and then I will be showing the final answer. Or even we can show the calculation in the first column itself. So this is the table where we are going to write revenue. We are going to write the cost of sales. We are going to write the gross profit. And then we are going to write the operating expenses and then we are going to write the operating profit. So these values will be written over here. Now let's move to the adjustments first because adjustment number one basically per first part of the question mainly relates to redrafting the PNL. So we can skip the balance sheet for the time being. 
Now the question says that on 1st April 20x4, how many months prior to the year end? April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, nine months prior to the year end. Aspect company decided to focus on its core business and so disposed of a non core division. Aspect company is the one to whom we are deciding whether to acquire it or not. We are the fungic company and we are thinking to acquire the aspect company. So aspect company has decided to focus on its core business and so disposed of a non core division nine months prior to the year end. The disposal generated a loss of 1.5 million, which is included in the, within the operating expenses. So in operating expenses, we are going to deduct the loss of 1500 because this is a one time loss that this is not going to be there every time. The following extract shows the results of the non core division for the period to disposal, which which were included in aspect company's results for 20 X4. So the results of the division that has been sold relates 2100 to the revenue. So we will be deducting 2100 from revenue. And the cost of sales is 1200. So we'll be deducting 1200 from the cost of sales. And 900 gross profit 700 is the operating expenses which we will be re removing. And the operating profit was 200. So if we remove these values automatically the 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 disposal of the division will, will be automatically removed from the financial statements. So let me write the revenue value as 54 200. The value of cost of sales was 21 500. And the value of operating expenses was 11,700. So this will automatically provide us the values relating to aspect company without the non core division. Because next year, if I fungi company acquire the aspect company, I'm not going to get the revenue of 2100. I'm not going to get the cost of sales of 2200. I'm not going to get a gross profit of 900. I'm not going to, to generate the operating expense of 700 and I'm, I'm not going to to generate the profit of 200. Neither I'm going to incur a loss. So what information is relevant for me is excluding these values. Now the question further says that at present aspect company pays a management charge of 1% of the revenue to the Gamilton group which is included in the operating expenses. So we are paying 1% as the as the um, management charge 1% which is 1% of the revenue. Fungic company imposes a management charge of 10% of gross profit on all its subsidiaries. So if I go upwards and I see the revenue was 54,200. So operating expenses are include uh, operating expenses includes 1% of 5400. So let's use a calculator. 54,200 into 1 divided by 100 which means that current currently the management charge is 542 and when we fungi company acquire the the aspect company the 542 management charge is not relevant to us so we are excluding this and instead we will be including the management charge that we are going to charge what is our charge our charge is 10 percent of the gross profit so whatever gross profit is we are going to add 10 percent of gross profit into it because we have not calculated the gross profit yet. So I'm writing this in a general term and then we'll, we will convert this into the value when once we have got the gross profit. So adjustment one incorporated adjustment two incorporated. Now the question says that aspect companies administration offices are currently located within a building owned by Gamilton group. So the the, uh, the administration office is within the building of the Gamilton group. If aspect company were acquired the company would need to seek alternate premises. Obviously once we acquire it we are not going to use the same premises. Instead we need to acquire or rent out another premises. Aspect company paid rent of 46,020 X4. So we will be saving the the expense of 46,000 rent minus 46,000 plus. Instead commercial rent for equivalent prop, uh, uh, office space would cost. 120,000. 
So 46,000 of the operating expenses will be saved by saving the rent and instead 120,000 will be given. So currently the rent was 46 and the proposed rent after our acquisition is going to be 120. The following is a list of comparable industry average key performance indicators. So this is not uh, relevant to us right now. So that is it. All adjustments incorporated. So let's let's close the brackets. Cost of sales 1200. So let's use a calculator again. So 54 200 minus 2100 is going to be 52 100. Similarly, 21,500 minus 1,200 is going to be negative 20,300. So 52,100 minus 20,300 would become 31,800 for the gross profit. And 10% of the gross profit, 31,800 would become 3,180. 3,180. So 11,700 minus 1,500 minus 700 minus 542 plus 3,180 minus 46,000 plus 120,000 would become 86,138. So this will become the operating expenses once we acquire the aspect company. And is there any error in calculation 11700 minus 1500 minus 700 minus 542 plus 3180 okay all values are in thousands actually so this is not 46000 this is 46 and this is 120 so 542 3180 minus sorry 11700 minus 1500 minus 700 minus 542 plus 3180 minus 46 plus 120 is going to be 12212. 12212. So 31800 minus 12212 would become 19588. So these are the values which would which which would be relevant to the aspect company. So we can make the bold gross profit as bold and operating profit as bold. We can even stretch this out so that the values are more understandable in a single line. So this is how actually we have done the first requirement of redrafting the profit or loss, which would be relevant to us. Tajwar has a question that disposal generated a loss of 1.5 million which is included within the operating expenses then why we are deducting because Tajwar we are the fungit company we are planning to acquire a spec company and a spec company has disposed of a non-core division and has incurred a loss of 1.5 million so once we acquire it will that loss be borne by us as well every year obviously not that is a one-time loss which has been incurred by a spec company so once I acquire Funjet com uh, uh, aspect company, what profit should I expect that that aspect would bring to me? We want to calculate the profit that we expect. We expect Funjet company to bring to us. So automatically the loss which has been incurred will not be brought to us because that is a one time loss that will not be there every time. So the profit after the acquisition of aspect company that we are going to generate is, is should be expected at 19588 are you getting the point as well that the loss is a one time loss it, it will not be there once we acquire aspect company okay so sidra wants the whatsapp group link sidra i will share in a while so now our first requirement part a has been completed and we have scored five marks now for part b the question says that calculate the 20x4 ratios for aspect company equivalent to those shown in note 4 based on the restated financial information in part a so based on this information we are expected to calculate these ratios so 
So let's calculate these ratios. Uh, ratios based on revised or adjusted information. So again, we can give this a heading, for example, heading two. Now in this, we are going to write our answer. So let's insert a table again. This time we are going to insert the, the table relating to the gross profit margin operating one, two, three, four, five, six rows are required. And for columns, we can have three columns were by one by the name of name, one by the name of ratio calculation and second and third by the final answer. So let's calculate one, two, three, four, five, six. We need three by six table. And we can stretch stretch it out. So the first ratio is going to be the gross profit margin. Second ratio is going to be the operating profit margin. Third ratio is going to be receivables collection period. Fourth is going to be the current ratio. And then we have an acid test ratio. And then we have a ratio by the name of gearing. Even if you want to insert a row later on, what you can do is you can use this button. This will automatically add the, the uh, rows. Similarly, for example, if I want to delete these rows, what I can do is I can select them and uh, no, they are not deleted this way. Delete column, delete table, delete row. So this will actually delete the row for us. So now how do we calculate the gross profit margin? You can even increase the size of the word processing so that the entire question can be seen on a single page because we need these values in this working so you can adjust the, the area your uh, according to your needs. So now gross profit margin is 31,800 divided by 52, 100. So 31,800 divided by 52, 100 multiplied by 100. Similarly, operating profit margin is going to be 19,588 divided by 52,100 in 200. Receivable collection period. What is the formula of receivable collection period in days? Receivables divided by credit sales into 365. So let's see the value of receivables. This was 5,700. So 5,700 divided by 50 to 100 into 365 will give us the receivable days. And then we need current ratio. Current ratio means current assets, which was 12,900 divided by current liabilities, which are 11,600. But one thing if you remember, that the question said in the note that you should assume that any increase or decrease in profit as a result of your adjustment in part A will also increase or decrease the cash. So if we see the profit was originally 21,000, but for us the profit is 19,588. So the profit has been decreased by what amount? By 19 minus 19,588. The profit is decreased by 1412. So the cash will also decrease by 1412 and effectively the current assets will also decrease by 1412. So currently the the uh, the current assets are 12,900 but after the change in profit these will be decreased by 1412. So how we have calculated 1412 by the taking the profit 21,000 minus 19,588. So this way we have calculated the decrease in the profit. Then we have asset test ratio. Asset test ratio means 12,900 minus 1412 from the above and minus we are going to de deduct the inventory which is 4,900 divided by 11,600 will give us the asset test ratio which is also known as quick ratio. So current assets taken from the above and then deducted the inventory from the um, from the above value. And finally, we have a gearing in gearing. We are going to divide debt divided by debt plus equity. So the loan is 16,700 divided by 16,700 
plus the equity being 9000 plus again if the profits are decreasing by 1412 so the retail earnings will also decrease by 1412 which means the equity will not remain 9000 instead it is going to be 9000 minus 1412 so 1412 will be decreased from both the retail earnings and the cash Shanisha is saying that would that require a journal entry to record the decrease? Yes, we can prepare a general entries as retail earnings debit and bank credit Retail earnings debit and bank credit or we can directly incorporate that as well Instead of preparing the entry in the examiner answer you will find a double entry as retail earnings debit and bank credit But if you are incorporating the same impact without writing the entry that is uh, equivalent actually So now we have uh, we have inserted the ratio formulas now if we uh, Calculate these using the calculator. We will get the answer Tajwar is saying please explain again why we are deducting one for one two from the current and asset test ratio Okay, Tajwar Shamir is saying the the equation provided in the question is debt divided by equity Okay, let's check. Yes, it is debt divided by equity So we can do debt divided by equity by removing the debt Thank you, Shamir. Okay, now your question, Tajwa, that why we are deducting uh, 1412 is because in the question, the question said that you should assume that any increase or decrease in profit as a result of adjustment in part A, the profit was 2100, but because of the adjustments, it is 19588. So it has been decreased by 21,000 minus 19588. So the profit has decreased by 1412 and the, the question says that you should assume that you should assume that any increase or decrease in profit as a result of your adjustment part A will also increase decrease cash. That's well the, the 1412 will also impact the cash and if it is impacting the cash this means that the cash will decrease by 1412 and similarly the current assets will also decrease by 1412 So that is why we have deducted 1412 from the amount of the current assets Okay, so now let's use the calculator to, to calculate the values 31800 divided by 50 to 100 in 200 will give us 61% and 19588 divided by 50 to 100 into 100 will give us 37.6 percent and then we have receivable collection period 5700 divided by 50 to 100 into 365 will give us 39.9 which is approximately 40 days and then in current ratio it's 12 12900 minus 1412 divided by 11,600 will give us 0 0.99 which is approximately 1 is to 1 or we can also say 1 times and then we have 12,900 minus 1412 minus 4,900 divided by 11,600 which is 0 0.57 is to 1 0 0.57 is to 1 and finally gearing is 16700 divided by 9000 minus 1412 will give us 2.2 uh, 2 into 100 it's 220 percent so these are the ratios that we have calculated for SPACT and now we have gained 10 marks relating to 5 relating to part A and 5 relating to part B any questions so far in uh, while we have performed the calculations? Any questions with respect to the calculations? Redrafting the profit and the redrafting the and calculating the ratios. Okay, now part C using the ratio calculated in part B comment on aspect companies 20x4 performance and financial position Compared to the industry average KPIs provided in note number four So now what what we need is to compare both the values 
that our gross profit margin is 61 expects gross profit margin is 61 and the KPI is 45 so now we 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 can see that our gross profit margin is higher why can the gross profit margin be higher what does the word uh, what does the the higher gross profit margin actually means So we can give a heading relating to gross profit margin and we can have some basic points that we are going to write like for example higher gross profit margin would mean that aspect company is charging a higher price as compared to the industry higher gross profit margin means that we are charging a higher selling price as compared to the industry averages so higher gross profit margin would mean that respect company is charging higher profits higher prices selling prices as compared to the industry and even if we talk that Aspect company is a part of the group So there may be some intra group sales as well Maybe the the transaction between the group entities are above the Industry margins and due to that maybe the gross profit margin of aspect is higher so we can say that Higher gross profit margin of aspect company May mean may highlight or may Reflect that aspect company is charging a higher selling price as compared to the industry even or as aspect company is a part of the Gamilton group There is a possibility of some intra group transactions Affecting the the intra group transactions above the normal selling price which would have increased the margin of aspect company while preparing the group financial statements these intra group transactions are reversed but the question has provided us the individual financial statements of aspect company which would also include any intra group sales so the higher gross profit margin has multiple reasons can you people see the answer that i'm writing is it uh, uh, enough to 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 make you understand or, or or should i increase the font size should i increase the font size or this enough sufficient enough for you people to understand please increase the size Shamir is saying is it now okay because there is no option to increase the font size I have to zoom into my browser okay so let's try zooming one more time and no Okay, so that will be enough. I think so. So the first point that we have highlighted relates to the gross profit margin that the normal industry is charging 45% Raza wants to increase more Let me try
I think this is the maximum that we can increase or the second option we would have will be to increase the font size by making this a heading. Is this enough or, or should I try some more alternate options? Let's make this heading two. Is that okay now? In the exam, you're going to write normal paragraph. I have just changed this into heading so that it can be viewed easily by you people. Okay, Wilson is saying that this is good. Okay, now let's look at the second uh, ratio. The second ratio was operating profit margin, which in the industry is 28%, but uh, for us it is actually 37.6%. So it's again at a higher value. So let's write operating profit margin. We are going to comment on the operating profit margin. So now what what answer should we be writing over here that why is the operating profit margin higher? One of the reasons may be the same that we are charging a higher price or the uh, or the intra group tradings may be there. One of the reasons is going to be that what else can we write? In operating profit margin always remember one thing that one important area that you should be writing is actually Let me use one note for that. That for example, if there's a company having a GP margin of let's say 40%, but it has an operating profit margin of let's say 10%. This means that what is the 30% actually representing? The 30% is, is representing the operating expenses. So when when my gross profit margin is going to be higher automatically the operating profit margin will also be higher. The only difference between these two is going to be the uh, the the expense percentage. Similarly if there is another company or let's talk about the question. If I talk about the question the question has said that the gross profit margin was 45 and operating profit margin was 28 of the industry. So 45 and 28 basically means that 17% of the revenue is the operating expenses of the industry. As compared to us, we are having 61% GP and 37.6% operating expenses. 61 and 37.6% of the expenses. So, so the reason of a higher operating profit margin is actually a higher gross profit margin. But if we calculate the expenses, it is going to be 61 minus 37.6, which is 23.4. So in actual, our expense management is not good enough as compared to the industry. Our expense percentage is not good enough. The reason behind the operating profit margin is not that we are converting the profit well. The reason is because the gross profit margin was higher. So we are going to write this in the operating profit margin comment. Harris is saying that removal of the loss from the non core business. Harris, the removal has increased the profit as compared to our own. But right now we are comparing from the industry. We are comparing from the industry. So, so while comparing with the industry, you are not going to say that this is because of the removal of the division. So we are going to say that the reason behind or I'm going to say that the operating profit margin of a spec company is higher as compared to the industry which means that a spec company is converting its revenue into its profit 
in a better manner as compared to the other companies in the industry however i am changing the paragraph that however the reason behind the higher operating profit margin is actually the higher gross profit margin because the gross profit margin was higher that is why the the, the operating profit margin is, is, is also higher if we check the difference between the gross profit margin and operating profit margin it would show that aspect companies aspect companies expen operating expenses are how much 23.4 percent of the revenue while being 17 percent for the remaining industry this shows that the expense management of aspect company is not as good as the companies in the as good as the other companies in the industry one more reason behind the higher expenses maybe now if i go upwards and see the answer the operating expenses that we have recalculated the management fees charged by the gamilton group was actually 542 one percent of the revenue and the the operating expenses charged by the funjet companies 3180 it is almost six times so this may also be one of the reasons behind the higher expenses uh, uh, higher expense percentage so one more reason behind the higher expense may be the management charges charged by funjet company the management charges were previously 542 1% of the revenue which have increased to 31 10% of the gross profit so maybe the reason is not uh, um, may, maybe not because of the poor management of the aspect company but maybe due to the higher management charges so we can say that one of the reasons behind higher expense may be the management charges by funjet company um, the management charges were previously 542 which have increased to 3180 which is a major increase so it is not necessary that or even we can exclude that even for for example if i use a calculator again and i want to calculate the operating expenses back so the operating expenses is 11700 minus 1500 minus 700 and plus 120 minus 46 this time i have not included the impact of minus 5542 and 3180 we will say the expenses are 9574 divided by 5200 means 18 percent so even if we exclude the impact of the management charges we are going to say the expenses are approximately 18 percent of the revenue have you got this calculation what we have done we have excluded the impact of 542 and 3180 to check what impact is the management charges creating so we can say that if
if the impact of the management charges is removed the expenses will be 18% of the revenue so the main reason behind a higher expense percentage of aspect company may be that aspect company is charging too much of management charges or maybe gamilton group was charging a very low management fees so the reason may either be that aspect is uh, that funject company is charging more this is funject company either funject company is charging too much of the management charges or the gamilton group was charging too low because the difference is too much so either that was low or either this is high we don't know so we we have to mention both the points so we have discussed a lot of areas in the operating expenses because this is one of the major areas in the exam now let's see receivable days it was 41 and for us it is 40 days so there is no major change in the receivable days so for receivable days we are going to say that For receivable days, we can say that there is no major difference between the receivable days of aspect company and the industry averages. which means that the credit period provided by aspect company is according to the industry practices now let's see the current ratio current ratio of the industry is 1.6 and current ratio of aspect company is too low so ideally the, the current ratio should be two times So we can say that ideally the current ratio should be two times but if a company is able to maintain the current ratio as per the industry it is also considered to be good enough in case of aspect company its current ratio is one times as compared to the industry of 1.6 times which is quite low so we can say that the current ratio of aspect company is quite low as compared to both the ideal ratio and the industry ratio so what can be the reason behind this why is the amount low The reason may be that uh, the, the gearing in the industry is 240 and our gearing is comparatively 220. So, may, so maybe the reason is that we have we have received less cash as compared to the, the, the other companies in the in the industry. So because of low cash balance, our current ratio is less.
and similarly if we talk about asset test ratio it was 1.4 of the in that of the industry and for us it is 0.57 so there is one more thing that we have to remember that the current ratio was 1.6 and the quick ratio is 1.4 the difference between this is actually 0.2 which relates to inventory so we can say that inventory 0.2 times of the liability the inventory 0.2 times of the liability and for us it was 1 and 0.57 so 0.43 times is the inventory so so we can also say that we are we are holding approximately double inventory as compared to the industry which is a risk for us because the the the, the inventory may be outdated slow moving uh, due to new due to new technological advancements so our ratio is comparatively less even our inventory is twice which means that our bank balance is comparatively lower as compared to the industry because if you see that our receivables are more or less the same receivable days are same so the amount of receivables will, be, will also be approximately same and our inventory is twice as compared to the industry which means that only reason of our current ratio being less is our bank balance are you people getting this point that receivable days are same which means approximately receivables are same inventory we are having twice which means that twice inventory should have increased the current ratio but the our but our ratio is comparatively less which means that it is due to our lower bank balance so we can write this in the comments that the the inventory of aspect company 1 minus 0.57 is 0.43 times of the current liabilities while that of industry is 0.2 1.6 minus 1.4 this means that aspect company is holding a higher inventory as compared to the industry which will also carry a risk of obsolescence and a loss in the future and then we are going to say that the receivables of aspect company as compared to the industry seems to be more or less the same as the receivable days are almost the same and the inventory of aspect company is higher which means the only reason for a lower current ratio is a lower bank balance so aspect company has a lower bank balance as compared to the industry despite the fact that aspect has sold a division and would have received cash during the current year even after receiving that cash the amount in the bank is lower maybe a spec company would have used that cash to repay some loan or acquire some of the new assets 
so we are not sure that why is our bank balance lower but but there is some problem in the bank balance because when we have disposed of the company the bank should have been higher when we have disposed of an encore division the 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 bank balance should have been higher although we have incurred a loss but we would we, we would still have received some cash so where is that cash maybe we have repaid the loan maybe we have purchased some new assets there is something which is hidden in the question so we have highlighted that that there, that there is some problem uh, in the bank balance finally we are going to write some answer on gearing that the gearing of a spec company is 220% which is lower than the industry having a gearing of 240% this shows that a spec company company's financial risk as compared to the industry is lower which is good for funjet company but still 220% is too high um, in normal circumstances so 220 percent is too high but as compared to industry this is good enough so we can say maybe um a spec company would have repaid some of the debt after the disposal of the non-core non-core division So now let's have a conclusion that according to our analysis how is the performance and the position in an overall view the profit margins of a spec company are higher as compared to the industry but funjet company should identify if the reason is due to intra group trading or a spec company is charging a higher price if the reason is intra group trading the decision to acquire or not should be based after removing the intra group transactions for the financial position the financial risk of a spec company is lower but the current ratios are comparatively not good specifically for the bank but this is something which can be improved after funject has acquired so this is your overall conclusion of the answer that according to our analysis the profit margins are good as compared to the industry but make sure that this is not due to the intra group trading if it if it is due to intra group trading then these are not the true results remove those those intra group tradings and then identify the formulas again 
and for the financial position we have said that the gearing is comparatively lower which is good but bank balance is comparatively less but this is something which can be which can be compensated because we still have 20 percent debt lower than the industry so we can issue 20 percent more debt and raise some finance so we can say by issuing debt and matching the gearing with the industry so this was your first question any questions from your side I am making these into normal paragraphs so that when I export these values this these this answer it can be more understandable to everyone so in exam you're going to write all paragraphs in the normal mode with the headings as a para, as, a, as a heading 3 and the main headings as heading 2 so that even if we need to write another heading we have some space available So I'm going to export the answer so that I have this in the word format and then I will be sending you on the WhatsApp group. So we have the export answer. So if you see this is the complete answer that we have prepared even there are tables in the word that we have prepared there are tables there are paragraphs now we can even see if we have made any spelling mistakes but the spelling mistakes will not be penalized so approximately we have written too much of answer the the ratio analysis approximately covering 1.5 pages so in exam if you are also covering approximately one page that is sufficient enough So let's have a question and then we'll be taking a short break of 10 minutes then we'll be continuing with the next question Shamir is saying should we consider removing management fees by fungect is higher it is more than proceeds from disposal and also non controllable by speed companies management yes we can say that uh, obviously Shamir Rachel is saying that what we are going to study tomorrow tomorrow we'll be solving um, a lot of section a type MCQs in which we are we will be revising a lot of standards as well so I'm targeting to solve MCQs of section A and section B in day 4 we'll be solving section A in day 5 we'll be solving section B and if you people have any suggestion you can provide we can we can even plan accordingly what do you people think that you you would want section A and B to be solved in day 4 or 5 or would you want final accounts consolidation ratios what do you people suggest we should be doing question section A or B or should we focus on to ratios consolidation and final accounts Harris is saying section A and B ratio is saying statement of cash flows okay I will try if we can solve some of the cash flow questions as well what about others Wilson is saying section A and B Okay, so we have solved uh, two questions of final accounts, two questions of consolidation. That is saying section A, B plus cash flows. That that is a good option of that. So I will try to to upload one of the cash flow questions as well. Okay, majority is saying cash flow plus section A and B. So I will try my level best to include cash flow somehow. So uh, what we can do is we can solve one cash flow question tomorrow and then remaining section A, and then one cash flow question in day five and then. Uh, uh, the remaining MCQs so whatever time we, we, we are going to get we'll be solving the MCQs so let's have a 10 minutes break and after 10 minutes we are going to continue again with the other question so see you in 10 minutes time again
Okay, everyone, let's continue again. So we have solved the first question. Now let's move on to the next one. <clears throat> now we're going to so solve the second question by the name of expand. Introduction, instructions. And we're going to start now. So we have another question. Let's see the requirement. The question says that using the above information, assess the relative performance and financial position of candidate and covert for the year ended 30th September 2015. So the question wants us to compare to assess the relative financial performance and position. In order to assess the directors of expand to make the acquisition decision, 11 marks are there to to um, analyze the information. Describe what further information may be useful to expand when making an acquisition decision. So we have two different parts. Part A, we need to analyze. So analysis of relative performance. And part B, we are going to write further information required. Okay, now the question says that Expand is a public company which has grown in recent years by acquiring established businesses. The following financial statements for two potential target companies are shown below. They operate in the same industry and Expand believes their shareholders would be receptive to a takeover. Receptive means they would be accepted. They have a positive attitude towards a takeover. An indicative price of 100% holding of the acquisition is 12 million dollars. Now the question says that the statement of profit or loss for the year ended 30th September 2015 is that Candid has a revenue of 20, 25,000 and Covert has a revenue of 40,000. So Covert's revenue is quite higher as compared to Candid. Now there may be two possibilities. Either its, uh, its price per unit will, uh, would be higher or its number of units sold will, uh, will be higher. The reason behind increased revenue is uh, are two possibilities. Either revenue can be higher because of two possibilities. Either higher selling price or higher number of units sold. There are two possibilities behind a higher revenue. How can we analyze that? What is the reason in the question? Whether it's selling price is higher or its number of units sold is higher? To identify, it is quite simple to identify the reason what you can do is you can calculate the GP margin because GP margin actually ignores the number of units. So if the GP margin is same, this means that the reason is number of units. And if the GP margin is higher. This means that selling price is higher. So whenever you want to identify if, if, if there's a difference between two companies revenue and you want to know what is the reason either the share price uh, uh, either the selling price is higher or the number of units sold are higher. What you can do you can calculate the GP margin. So we can uh, right now to be on the safe side we can uh, uh, we, we are going to write down some of the key points that we have identified. So revenue of covert is higher. Now if you see cost of sales is 32,819,000. The gross profit is 6,072,200. ,00. There's a quite difference in the gross profit uh, amounts. Distribution expenses, finance cost, profit before tax. And if you see 
that the profit before tax of candid is higher although its revenue was lower so we can say candid has a higher profit with lower sales so this is one of one more thing that we need to know that why is that so why is candid's um, profits higher although its revenue was low the question for this is that Income tax expense is 900 and 1000. Now this is something also unique profit of candid Profit of candid is higher, but the tax is lower profit of covert is lower, but the tax is higher. Why is that? So if you see 900 divided by 4500 makes it 20% so for candid the tax rate is 20% but for covert the tax rate is 25% so there is a difference between the tax rates which we can write in the further information required that the tax rate of candid is 20% but that of covert is 25% the reason behind different tax rates would be required for further detailed analysis so now we are writing part a and part b alongside so this is some further information required by us you can even use the numbers the, the bullets from the question like you can use um, lower Roman or you can use the default so this is the first important point that we have highlighted in the question now the profit is 3600 and 3000 if we go onto the balance sheet the property of candid is nil how this can be how is candid operating without a property this means that candid uh, would have leased the property would have um, rented the property so candid has own plant 4800 covert has 2000 candid has no lease plant covert has 5300 so approximately its assets are half and its revenue is also half its inventory is also almost half its receivables is, is almost also half but the bank balance is higher why is that so so we can say that fourth point that we have highlighted is that candid has a higher bank balance we need to know why is that so these are the points that we're going to write in the answer right now we are just noting the points that we have identified while, while reading the question so the total assets of candid is also approximately half its equity shares is also half and it has no revaluation reserve but covert has a revaluation reserve as well so covert has revalued its non current assets now what will happen is that due to which it would have charged a higher depreciation resulting in a lower profit margin and revaluation would have increased the assets and equity due to which the ROE, ROCE and net assets turnover would be lower. So this will have a negative impact on the profit margins on ROE, on ROC and the net asset turnover. So this is one of the major points that we have identified in the question that covert has revalued its non current assets and now the return earnings if you see the return earnings of candid is 1600 and that of covert is 2700 although candid used to generate higher profits candid used to generate higher profits but its return earnings is comparatively lower why is that so 
it is generating more profits higher profits but the return earnings is lower this means that candid has a higher dividend payout ratio as compared to covert due to which its equity will be lower and roe and roce will be higher so candid has a double benefit it has not revalued it uh, uh, its assets and it is paying a higher dividend payout ratio so its ratios are going to have a positive impact on that and then we have a finance lease obligation we have 5% loan notes of 5000 and we have 10% loan notes of 5000 <coughs> <coughs> sorry Okay, sorry. So Candid has double benefit and the loan notes are 5,000 for Candid with interest rate of 5% and 10% for Covert. Why is that so? We can ask in further information that Candid has raised a loan with an interest rate of 5% but the rate for covert is 10 percent the reason behind different interest rates is normally the risk factor so expand should identify the reason behind different interest rates because if we identify the reason behind the different interest rates only then we are going to identify if, if there is any if there is any uh, difference in the financial risk of both the companies unique is asking sir how do you know higher dividend payout ratio okay unique if you see that our return earnings is 1600 but our profit was 3600 so profit was 3600 but the retail earnings is 1600 but for covert if we see the profit was 3000 and the retail earnings are 2700 so if we try to calculate the dividend from here this is going to be 300 dividend the profit was 3000 we have retain return earnings of 2700 so i can say that we have paid dividend of 300 and have retained the remaining of the profits but for covert if we see it has paid a dividend of approximately two thousand dollars or more so there is a huge difference between the dividend payout ratio of both the companies we can say that it has paid dividend of 300 out of 3000 so 10 percent is the dividend payout ratio and over here 2000 divided by 3600 so the dividend payout ratio is 55.55 percent approximately so this is the difference between the payout ratio so if a company is generating higher profits but but the retail earning is lower this means that the reason is the dividend payout ratio okay so now we we have identified we have uh, noted that we need to know what is the reason behind different interest rates then we have trade payables current liability portion and then we have taxation and total equity and liabilities so let's go on to the notes and see what further information has been provided and then we'll be writing the answer including these points unique is saying so we assume 3600 is retained earnings from the year not accumulated from the previous years even if it is accumulated from the previous years if i say that this retained earnings of 1600 has profits of the of the previous years as well this would mean that we have even paid a dividend above 2000 this would mean that we have even paid a dividend above 2000 and this has also paid a dividend of above 300 
but still the dividend uh, the difference in the retail earnings is actually highlighting the 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 the, the dividend payment policy that we earn 3600 we, we are earning more candidate is earning more but retaining less if we have an overall concept that candidate is earning more but retaining less this is the overall concept so earning more retaining less means paying more dividends welcome okay so now the note says that the carrying amount of the plant is that candid has own plant with the cost of 8000 covert has a plant of 10000 less government grant of 2000 Candid has got a government grant of 2000. This means that the cost of the asset has been decreased. So one more further information required. Reason behind the government grant to Candid should be, um, or we can say that expand should identify the reason behind the government grant to candidate and if there is any condition attached to the grant and if these grants are provided on a recurring basis or have been provided for one time only because if the government has provided a grant this means that when expand is going to acquire candid will expand also receive this grant or this grant is for for some specific reasons so we should be aware of that and apart from that there is one more important point that candid has received a government grant which has decreased the cost of the asset and resulting in a lower depreciation expense and a higher profit margins plus the lower cost of the asset will also increase the net asset turnover because if I decrease the cost of the asset the turnover will, will, would become obviously higher so there are seven different points that we have identified up to now, which we have to write in the ratio analysis. Now the accumulated depreciation is 1208,000. If I see depreciation of covert is 80% of the asset cost. And for candidate is approximately 20%. So if I acquire candidate, the assets uh, that I'm getting is 20% depreciated. But if I acquire covert, I'm going to get a 80% depreciated asset. So maybe in the near future, I need to reinvest some uh, 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 additional amount to, to purchase the to purchase new assets. So this is also one of the important points that the plant of candid has only been depreciated by 20%, but that of covert has been depreciated by 80% so if expand acquires covert it may need to inject more cash in covert in the recent few years to acquire new plant so this is one of the uh, 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 one of the important points that we need to write in the answer. So apart from that, we have a lease plant nil and if of eight thousand, and then the following no ratios have been calculated. So the question is given as the return on year in capital employed ROCE. Candid has a ROCE of sixty two point five and covert has thirty one. So the candid's ROCE is quite higher. What is the reason behind that? We have uh, uh, written a lot of reasons up to now. You can even actually use your scratch pad to write these, these reasons. For example, I open a scratch pad. We can even copy paste these over here. 
so you uh, so for example if i close and if i move back to the scratch pad you will find all of the areas that you have written already over there so 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 the areas can be copy pasted over there so that now i can write complete paragraphs so let's start with roce that roce of candidate is higher than that of covert why is that so in fact it is not necessary even to start from roc i can give you one more uh, uh, good method if you see the the net asset turnover taken as same figure as capital employed is 3.3 times and 2.5 times which means that candidate is, is 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 better utilizing its assets the gross profit margin is 24 and 18 the gross profit margin is 24 and 18 which means that candid is charging a higher price as compared to covert so let's start writing our answer from the gross profit margin this is a, this is a comparatively better approach start from gp margin then net profit margin then roc link with net asset turnover and then moving towards the balance sheet ratios so this is a comparatively better approach to to the answer so we can say that the gross profit margin <clears throat> of candidate is higher than that of covert this means that candidate is charging a higher selling price as compared to covert but the sales but the total sales of covert were let's see the total sales these were 40000 for covert were $40000 for covert and $25000 for candid this shows that the number of units sold by covert is comparatively higher than that sold by candid this is why its total revenue is comparatively higher so we have started from the gross profit margin that the reason behind gross profit margin of candid being higher means that the selling price charge is higher but the sales were lower which means that the number of units sold by candid is comparatively less now let's write about the profit margin in profit margin again i would say that the area that we had discussed earlier That for example if the GP margin of candid is 24 and OP margin is 19 this means that the expenses are 5% of the revenue and similarly this is 18 and 12.3 this means that the expenses are 5.7% of the revenue so the expenses of covert are comparatively higher now why why are expenses of candid comparatively lower this we are going to highlight in the answer now so net profit margin the net profit margin of candidate is higher as compared to covert one of the reasons behind is the higher gross profit margin apart from that candid has received a government grant which 
has reduced the cost of the asset to candid resulting in lower expenses and higher profits Okay, the admin is requesting to provide feedback quickly. So you have one minute to provide the feedback. So you people have one minute to provide the feedback for today's session quickly so that we can continue reading the question. One minute you have to provide the quick feedback. <clears throat> Meanwhile, I can have some water. Okay, so let's continue again. So we were discussing the reason behind the net profit. So net profit margin of candidate is higher as compared to covert. One of the reason behind is the higher gross profit margin. Apart from that, Candid has received a government grant which has reduced the cost of the asset to candid resulting in a in lower expenses and higher profits. Further, if you remember that covert had revalued its non current assets. Which would have increased. The value of the asset and the depreciation resulting in a lower net profit margin so the reason we have highlighted are uh, uh, three different reasons one one being that the gp margin was higher second being that the government grant received would have reduced depreciation for candidate third the revolution has increased the depreciation of covert let's see if we have any other thing we have written about higher revenue. We have written about the higher profit. We have written about the property. We have not written about the bank balance yet. We have written about this. We have not written about the dividend payout ratio. We have written about the government grant. So three points further to be written later. So now we have a control over what was to be written and what has been written. But you but you people have to practice all these uh, using all these features before the exam Bef because if you're using all these in the exam for the first time it will it your uh, it will take you time comparatively more time for you. Okay now we have written about net profit margin gross profit margin now let's talk about the net asset turnover and the ROCE. We can have a combined answer as well. So 
So we can say that the net asset turnover and ROCE of candid are higher as compared to covert because why is that so because covert has revalued its non current assets increasing the value of assets and resulting in a decreased net asset turnover and the increase in asset has also increased the equity which means revaluation reserve which has decreased the ROCE further candid has a higher dividend payout ratio due to which its equity is comparatively lower and has increased the ROCE and the net asset turnover so the reason behind these two uh, values is one being the revaluation and second being the asset uh, 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 the higher dividend payout ratio the higher ratios of candid is not only because of its good performance so expand should identify the relevant ratios if excluding these differences to evaluate the true performance of both the companies so now we are done with with analyzing the these four profitability ratios now let's discuss the liquidity ratios current ratio inventory receivable payable and gearing so the current ratio of candid is comparatively higher why is that so let's go and check current ratio is higher because inventory is lower trade receivable is lower because bank is higher so the higher current ratio is mainly because of the higher bank balance and there's a finance lease obligation also in in, uh, in the books of covert so the finance lease obligation will also have a negative impact on the current ratio so what we can do is we can write current ratio and we can say that the current ratio of Candid is higher than that of covert because of two reasons one that the bank balance of candid is comparatively higher and second being that covert has some finance lease obligation in the current liabilities due to which the difference is being created so in current ratio we have identified two different reasons one the bank being higher and the second that the current liabilities um, due to finance lease obligation now if we talk about closing inventory the closing inventory days is 31 for candid and 38 for covert so we can say inventory days and receivable days let's have a combined comment 
So we're going to say that the inventory days and receivable days of candid are comparatively lower than that of covert. This shows that candid has held a lower stock as its sales are also comparatively lower and covert seems to provide more days to its customers to pay their balance maybe to enhance its sales revenue this is also this may also be one of the reasons of its higher revenue so because its sales are higher so comparatively it is holding more stock and giving more time period to its customers and we can even write about payable days in this because there is no much difference in the payable days. So the payable days of both the entities is almost the same. So the last thing is gearing. The gearing of candidate is higher. Although it has not leased the assets, the, the gearing of covert is, is low and it has even leased uh, some assets. So why is the reason that Candid has a higher gearing? What do you think that why is the gearing ratio of Candid comparatively higher? So we are going to say that the gearing of Candid is higher than covert. Or we can say that the gearing of covert is lower than candid. Despite having some leased assets. So the reason of a higher gearing of candid is basically the fact that it has a higher dividend payout ratio which has decreased its equity and increased the gearing so basically the reason uh, 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 of the lower uh, of the higher gearing is not a higher debt instead the reason is basically a lower equity so this was how you had to basically write the comments in the exam. We have discussed every single point appropriately. So if I go to the scratch pad, we have talked about the higher bank balance. We have talked about the dividend ratio. We have not written this point yet and we have almost covered majority of the points. So it is not necessary to write everything. Unique is saying so can we say that equity in covert is also higher duty division? Yes, unique you can say but actually its gearing is Comparatively lower. So yes, you can say that too That the Covert has also revalued its assets Which had increased its equity and reduced its gearing So here we go so that was the answer that was supposed to be written by you people and now I'm going to apply some formatting so this is paragraph number two this is paragraph three this is paragraph three paragraph three now we have given the examiner all of the headings and our comments that what should be done why should be done what is the reason and now I'm going to export my answer so that I can share with you people on the WhatsApp group. So here we go. We have the complete answer in the 
word format approximately 1.5 pages so this is the length of the answer that you should be writing in the exam so that was all for today thank you so much thank you everyone and uh, we'll be solving some cash flow statement questions tomorrow on your request i will be solving one cash flow and remaining section amcqs and then one more cash flow in day five and some more section b questions on day five so that is all you can contact me personally on my whatsapp number as well if you have any questions and you can post it in the group as well so thank you everyone thank you Enik, for the comment thank you wilson Take care, everyone, and see you tomorrow. Allah Hafiz.